Electron configurations is another useful tool for looking at atoms and where the electrons are in the atom. And this will help us to see some of the properties of atoms as we continue on. So electron configurations is writing the, um, a series of the principal energy level, the sublevel, and how many electrons are in the sublevel. So we're first going to is read off the periodic table to get this electron configurations. Then we have uh, two areas where we are going to modify that to make it correct uh, according to nature. So for vanadium, element 23, we're gonna do vanadium. Uh, so it has 23 electrons. We wanna show 23 electrons. So I'll do it the long way first, then the short way. So the long way, we start from hydrogen and start adding up. So hydrogen and helium are both 1s electrons. So we have um, 1s with two electrons. Then we go to 2s, lithium beryllium. So 2s with two electrons. Then we go to our 2p area, uh, and we had that complete filled with six electrons. Then after 2p, we go to uh, 3s, uh, sodium magnesium, that has two electrons. Then we hit our 3p, alum aluminum through argon, with six electrons. And we know that level three has uh, the D sublevel, but the D sublevel, 3D, is in period four. It comes after 4S. So we're just reading the periodic table because that's the way the energy is over. So after 3P, the next energy level is 4S, and then 3D is higher energy than that. So we're doing 4S with our two electrons. And then we hit our 3D where vanadium is. Vanadium's third box, third column in 3D. So each column or box represents another electron. So we have 3D with three electrons in it. And this is the long way. There's a shorter way. If we count down from vanadium, until we hit a noble gas. So vanadium is number 23, so 22, 21, 20, 19, 18 is argon, 18 is a noble gas. So instead of writing the whole series, we write argon in square brackets, because that's gonna represent these electrons, and these electrons are core electrons. They will not participate in chemical bonding. So we just write that as argon, that's all our core electrons. Then we come up from argon, we have our potassium and calcium, that's our 4s2. And then our 3d3. So this is the noble gas configuration. This is a shorter, easier way of doing it. We also want to be able to read electron configurations. So we're going to convert the electron configuration into a element. And when we do this, we want to look at these numbers here. So S is completely full with two electrons. Um, because we'll see with our exception coming up that sometimes the S electrons get stolen and moved over into another level. So it's completely filled up. So now we're just looking for the fifth place in 4F. So F is the two lower rows, 4F is our first row. So we're looking for the fifth column in the, that row, one, two, three, four, five, and that is PM promethium. So let's do a, a couple more. Um, so francium number 87, I'll just do it the short way. That'd be a lot of writing to do it the long way. So a countdown at, at 86, we have radon. 
So we have right on. Um, so we're just going up one level from there. Uh, this is period seven, which the um, principal energy level matches for S and P. So period seven, we have a seven S. Branching is the first column, the first box, so 7S1. So I'm going to do the rest of these and then look at the exceptions. And we might have to rewrite a couple of these with the exceptions. So silver, reading off the power table, silver is number 47. It's on period five, so that'll be a, a 4D area, that is. We go backwards and we hit Krypton at 36. So we start with Krypton. Coming up from Krypton, we have rubidium cesium. So that would be our 5S with two electrons. Going from there, we're going into our D, that's our 4D area. And we look at silver, and silver is in the ninth column of 4D, so it'd be 4D9. Let's do a chromium. Chromium's in the 3D block. So we go back and we hit argon for our noble gas. Coming back up, we have our 4S electrons, then our 3D. Chromium is in the fourth column, fourth box, so 3D4. Let's do iodine. Iodine is number 53, so that will be in the 5P area. We go back until we hit an old gas, krypton. Coming back up from krypton, we have our 5S with two electrons. We have our 4D, which is complete with 10. Then we hit our 5P. And iodine is the fifth column, the fifth box. So we have five electrons there. Now, nature shifts some of these electrons around. So they're not always uh, the electron configuration that we'd get from reading the periodic table. So we're not going to try to identify all the areas. So this is some of the areas that uh, we are not following our integration rules the same. But we only have two areas here that we want to memorize. And that would be our chromium and molybdenum column and the noble metals, copper, silver, gold, and retention. So those two areas. So if we look at our chromium, so this is our predictive or periodic table. And if we look at the orbital configurations, we'll have our S electrons, S orbital and the 5D orbital. So right now, the parent table says that we should have two and S, four and five. But what it prefers grab that S and moves it over here. So now we have the D completely filled with one electron each, the S filled with one electron each, they're all going to have the same parallel spins, and this stabilizes the energy. So chromium and molybdenum do that. Tungsten underneath has the F orbitals um, also, and that disrupts this pattern that we see here. So our actual is going to be our argon, and it'll be a 4s1 and a 3d5. 
So we're going to see this in a number of properties at the half fill sublevel, where we have one electron in each orbital, parallel spins is stable. And it's going to affect a number of our properties that we look at. So the other area is the noble metals, copper, silver, gold. And uh, so silver up here does the same thing, except uh, in this case, the um, the silver starts off you know, by reading the practice table, it looks like it's just one short of filling that D level. So what silver finds to be more energetically favorable is it fills that D level and just leaves the S level half filled. So it's one electron, but in that case, that's half filled. And that is more stable than having the D level one electron short. So for the silver and the other elements in this column, it's going to have 5S1 for D. 10. So this is our actual, because the top ones are predictive. So there's only two areas where we have to worry about correcting our electronic configurations. It's the uh, column six, the fourth uh, D block, and column 11, the ninth D block. So we're going to either complete the D block or half fill the D block. Thank <laughs> you.